Nine years and two months. That's how long we've been walking the road with the Barjipos. We were going to gather up these things and go and meet these people and maybe visit them a couple times. You know, that would be it. And I didn't uh, imagine it being a, a life-altering or life-changing event. I thought, well, maybe next year we'll do something else. But um, on that day, our, all of our lives were changed. The reason we came to America is uh, because of the Civil War. And more especially, the Civil War came to the Crown ethnic group because the man who was the president for the country at that time, he's from my ethnic group. Civil War is very terrible. It's very terrible. If you don't go through it sometime, you don't know what, what it means. You don't have no hospital, of course. No. And I get breath in my own house, in the kitchen, where the rain was rolling down on me. And when she was born, she was all wet. Me too, I was all so with so so water. You had no sleep. You keep it thinking, oh my God, what my kids gonna eat tomorrow, Lord? I have nothing. The first day in the United States, it was so exciting and a uh, little bit discouraging. The reason I said a little bit discouraging because uh, when we got there first, we, we did not know how to establish. We did not have friends. I remember we stayed three days in the house without getting out because we don't know nobody and we doesn't have nobody here. After the fourth, the fifth days, we met our family, the real family that God gave us. It was Kelly and his family. When they came, they right at the door. So they, they passed to the window. Y'all open the door. I looked at them, I said, Alfonso, who the people they here? So he said, go and open the door. Immediately, Alfonso showed us pictures of the people he had left behind. And that was extraordinarily important to him to share with us immediately. People still in a camp, a relative who had died, the folks that they did not want to forget about once they established a new life here. We, we didn't actually have no friends, so when they came, that was like a blessing. Like, like our problems just went away like we had all the friends in the world. Our family has learned a lot from being friends with the Barjabos. They're really they're really good people and knowing them and knowing their stories and they're just very funny and enjoyable and we're always learning new things about their culture. I cook the fufu and I say Pat do you know fufu? He said no I never eat fufu before. I said, okay, come and try. He take the first spoon. I said, no, no spoon, wash your hand. He said, oh, I said, yeah. So he said, okay, I'm gonna try with a spoon. I said, okay. I, I love to eat the fufu, but I always say, you gotta make it for a white guy. You gotta make white guy fufu, because my, I start to sweat here like this, and I can't handle most of those spices. You know, I don't have any experience with that. He tip it, call it, put it in his soup. I just stay in steady. The first one, the second one, he said, You know what? Give me some water right there. And he drank two cups of water. And after a second, I see the whole place was red. I was like, I, I said, Oh God, what I did. One experience I remember in particular was the first time we introduced them to ice cream. Me as just like an eight year old kid enjoying an ice cream. But it was also fun to watch them enjoy it for the first time. I remember when we went out for ice cream. It was so delicious. It was like my first time tasting ice cream. It was cold, and when I was tasting the ice cream, it felt so like cold on my teeth. We are constantly amazed with their resilience. The kinds of things that they did not understand at the beginning, the kinds of things like how to find a job or how to learn about social services, even simple things like how to use a payphone. Um, 
are all very simple and clear to them now. They've gone on to purchase their own home. They've gone on to make sure that their kids are in a good school. They are a remarkably self-sufficient people. I met the Bardabos when I was young. They were young too, and we kind of grew up together. So I wouldn't say meeting them was a life-changing experience. I say it was a life-shaping experience. And I feel like it made me a stronger Christian. I just think everyone should have this opportunity because you'll just feel so good about it and you'll feel like you're doing something good for the world. I think it's perfectly normal to reach out and make friends with people whose backgrounds they have nothing in common with and find what's common. And largely, in our very beautiful relationship with the Barjabas, what's been common has been having fun. So we've mostly had fun. Exodus ministry is finding Christ in a way that he has called us to find him by encountering the other, the stranger and the alien, in a way that may be inconvenient, that may be frustrating, but ultimately results in joy, in relationship, and communion with him and his people. I feel happy when they even around me. I feel proud when they even come to my house. For the Exeter, I thank them ever so much. I thank them for organizing a, 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 a unique group that understand what refugees mean. When you're in this ministry, you understand about companionship, about carrying a cross, about frustration being filled with grace, possibly, you know, about anxiety being replaced with joy. After we finished eating, we hold hands, and I prayed. Uh, in my prayer, I said, gosh, you got it. Protect them, you know. I thank God for him pricking the end of our life. I thank God for God to make them to be our family.